So the first question I wanted to ask all of you is actually what are the outcomes that you are hoping to get out of the COP26, especially from the investment and asset management perspective? Set out what on paper seemed uh, a fairly unambitious goal, um, but in reality it's probably the best we can hope for, which is just to keep the one and a half degree target alive. Um, so. Um, the IPCC report showed that on current ambition, um, we're, we're likely to hit that within 20 years. Um, so I guess what we really want to see is a step change in the NDCs um, and a closing of the emissions gap in a pathway through to 2030. Um, biodiversity, coal um, and international funding to low income regions is, is probably the, the key areas that we're looking out for. Uh, we at Rabika will be keeping a close eye and we will be looking whether or not to see if it's a good cup or a bad cup. Um, that's the question. I think indeed uh, countries stepping up their game, uh, the, the 2030 pledges now only lead to half a percent of emission reduction where there's much, much more needed. So I think that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, again, also the financing uh, for the uh, poorer countries that still need to be, the pledge still needs to be fulfilled. So we'll be looking for that as well. And then thirdly, very important for us as investors, we really believe it will be a good cop if climate reporting, which is now um, mostly um, voluntary, will become actually um, um, compulsory or mandatory across the world in a glo on a global scale. There are two sides of this. COP, which means it is for society very important to make steps and go on joint statements, especially on the emerging markets and how to help those countries uh, having funding, all these things. But on the other side of the same coin, it is actually what we as investors in emerging markets also uh, hope for, because this can guide and help us to put capital to work also in these emerging markets. Uh, I think that, that two, two, two issues apart uh, or on top of what, what was mentioned before. Uh, one is carbon pricing, where we're obviously looking for for some some steps forward and something more aggressive there. And the other one is is uh, some some regulatory action on on the constructions of new coal, uh, because there are still coal power plants being built around the world. Uh, everybody knows that, that you know we don't need them; they shouldn't be there. Even if they are built, uh, they're, they're not going to live the whole uh, economic life and not going to probably make their money back. So, so, so some action on that is, is what we're looking for. And I think what what uh, what Adri mentioned uh, is is that once these things start to happen and once companies start to align and, and, and react to those policy signals that they get, that also makes it easier. I think you said then, then you can continue. <coughs> and maybe build out your investment in emerging markets. Pricing of carbon is, is absolutely a critical part of this journey. Um, and you know we're still at a point where uh, the discussion is so much about systems and frameworks rather than action. Um, and we all know that a metric ton of CO2 emitted today is gonna to be sitting around in the atmosphere for decades to come. And we frankly are running out of time with our global carbon budgets, perhaps only 10 years left, um, so we need to see these price signals be moving in the right direction quite promptly. What we'd like to see is more global coordination in terms of mandatory climate disclosures by issuers. And the reason that we'd like to see it is quite simply what gets measured gets managed. We would we've been advocating for or we would like to see consistent comparable data on scope one, scope two, scope three emissions locational data and harmonization. Um, and we believe if we were to get that information as investors, you would be, that's the first step to getting capital flowing in the right direction. So I'll be disappointed if asset managers don't come away uh, from COP26 thinking much more ambitiously about how they'll participate uh, in, in the transition. And I think, you know, obviously to do this, they need the help of policymakers, regulators, uh, need better, more reliable data on uh, climate risk to inform their investment decisions and to inform their engagements with the companies they own. I hope the TCFD recommendations will be uh, endorsed as a, as a way to, to provide better data. Um, and they need to do a better job collaborating with others to work with other asset managers, NGOs, industries to help entire industries 
decarbonize and, and, and also collaborating to support public policy initiatives. I think that's especially urgent in the U.S. 